Hi, this is Dr. Kevin Smith, and this is everything that you need to know about inflammation. This is an educational video on inflammation, and it is not designed to diagnose or treat any disease. There are two types of inflammation. Acute inflammation is considered to be good, and chronic inflammation is considered to be bad. Acute inflammation is the good type of inflammation, and it sets the stage for healing and repair. The four cardinal signs of acute inflammation include redness, heat, pain, and swelling. These signs and symptoms should only last a few days. Increased blood flow brings red and white blood cells to the affected area. Platelets seal the wound and white blood cells fight off infections. Collagen and new tissue is laid down. Fever can be part of the acute inflammation process. Fever is caused by the brain raising the body's temperature to cook a bug. It helps you to get rid of the infectious agents, be it a virus, bacteria, fungus, or a parasite. Fever is your friend, not your enemy. You may feel lousy, but fever is your immune system doing its job. Getting rid of a fever by taking Tylenol can prolong the infection. Chronic inflammation is another matter altogether. It's like something started the immune system response and then disengaged the shutoff button. Chronic inflammation is the root cause of most of the disease and pathologies that we know about. This includes cardiovascular disease, such as heart attacks and strokes, cancers, diabetes, arthritis, neuropathies, depression, fibromyalgia, liver, kidney disease, and more. For example, if your doctor feels that you are at risk of a heart attack or a stroke, what does your doctor tell you to take every day? A baby aspirin, right? Why? What does aspirin do for you? Aspirin is considered a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug and lowers inflammation levels in the body. When the building is burning down, you have to focus on putting the fire out first and foremost. Chronic inflammation is largely mediated by what you eat. You can eat pro-inflammatory foods that drive up inflammation, and you can eat anti-inflammatory foods that drive down inflammation. Examples of pro-inflammatory foods include sugar, junk food, fast food, trans fatty acids, and polyunsaturated fats like corn oil and palm oil. Examples of anti-inflammatory foods include olive oil, coconut oil, avocado, oily fish, green leafy vegetables, walnuts, and almonds. The suffix itis means inflammation. For example, arthritis means inflammation of the joints. Tendinitis means inflammation of the tendon. Bursitis means inflammation of the bursa. Dermatitis is inflammation of the skin. Laryngitis is inflammation of the voice box. Hepatitis is inflammation of the liver, and so on. When somebody suffers with arthritis, there are two broad types that need identified. Osteoarthritis is considered wear and tear or old age arthritis and rheumatoid arthritis, or RA, is caused by an autoimmune disease. Regardless of what type that we're dealing with, we need to directly address the chronic inflammation and reduce it as much as possible. There are certain laboratory tests that can measure chronic inflammation. The most important of these tests is called C-reactive protein, or CRP. This test can predict if you are at risk of a heart attack or a stroke. The normal range for CRP is 0.00 to 
to 3.00. Anything above 3.00 is abnormal and indicates you need help. The higher the lab value, the worse it is. Other lab tests that can tell you if you suffer with chronic inflammation include erythrocyte sedimentation rate, or ESR, and uric acid tests. Be sure to add tests for chronic inflammation the next time that you're getting routine blood tests. If you suffer with chronic inflammation, what can you do about it? For many people, the logical place to start is to take a drug. These can include over-the-counter drugs such as aspirin, ibuprofen or Motrin, Tylenol, and naproxen or Aleve. They can also include prescription strength drugs such as Celebrex, Diclofenac, Feldine, and even cortisone injections. The problem with taking these medications is that they are toxic and you run the risk of side effects as well as interactions with other drugs that you may be taking. Additionally, they may be hard on the body and cause stress to the GI tract, liver, kidneys, and brain. An alternative to taking drugs to control inflammation is to use nutritional supplements. A supplement approach is a good choice for most people because it works just as well as drugs, but is safer, has no side effects, and no interactions. Anti-inflammatory supplements include fish oils, turmeric, curcumin compounds, ginger, alpha-lipoic acid, resveratrol, and spirulina, a blue-green algae. How much should I take and how should I know when it's enough? What you don't want to do is judge your health based on how you feel. Ideally, your doctor will run labs to determine how inflamed you are. That way, the decision is based on objective data and not guesswork. But for general wellness, I think most people could benefit from taking two grams of fish oils per day. Naturally, the dose will go up depending on the inflammation levels. For example, somebody who has seriously high levels of inflammation will need a higher dose. If you are taking a blood thinner like Coumadin or Warfarin, you should talk to your doctor to see if it's safe to take fish oils. Thank you for watching this educational video on inflammation. If you have any questions, please feel free to send me an email and I can be reached at ksmithdc at gmail.com.